Shadow Garden. And who are the members eminence in Shadow explained by Anime Room Pie? Let's go. The Eminence in Shadow is an isekai that recently came out in fall 2022 and despite what some negative reviews What the fuck not recommended? TLDR bland power fantasy isekai story for edgelords. He's not wrong though. That's exactly the point of the show. It's really bland. I don't think it's bland. It's a power fantasy isekai story. Yes. The show says MC is OP whenever he shows up and he bulldozes terrorized the villains. Yes, did you not understand the whole point of a fucking 15-year-old kid beating the shit of a military veteran with a crowbar? Crowbar. As far as the blandness, the show places the MC in a sword and magic high school. I mean, yeah, the Dark Knights, yeah. There's little world building. I'd argue, no, there's a lot of world building. MC wants to be basically a mix of superpower, no weakness, Batman, Superman. For some reason, on top of being untouchable, he can instantly heal any wounds. I almost forgot the background characters. No, I think you forgot that Sid is a background character. He gets a massive background harm. They just No, this guy doesn't understand the point of the fucking show. Like, look, five out of 20 episodes. You're telling me you watch five out of fucking 20 episodes. Five, meaning I am atomic. This dude watched I am atomic and saying this shit. Nah, he's just a professional hater. Professional hater. Face. I think this is a very unique show that isn't afraid to just take the typical isekai tropes, adding a self-aware main character that's also the edgiest edge lord to make fun of set tropes. I mean, if you think the misunderstanding level of Ainz and Rimuru are bad. There is this constant comparison with Overlord, right? Ainz and, um, uh, to an extent, Rimuru too against, um, uh, Eminence and Shadow, but goddamn. Once we watch Overlord on this channel, bro, there's so much more Overlord, you know, Overlord. There's so much content I see of how Eminence and Shadow is, like, compared to Overlord that I want to watch, but I can't. Just wait till you watch this anime, and honestly, I think that's where the entertainment comes from. And you know what? After watching the anime, reading the manga, and a bit mm. of the light novel, I realized the world and ideas the series presents are quite compelling as well. One day, maybe if there's enough interest, we might watch the manga on stream. Maybe even the light novel. Just the content that we've already seen, not to spoil the future content. That's why I wanted to do my usual breakdowns of elements from the series, and what better than to start by talking about Shadow Garden, the mysterious organization that our main character created. Also, this video will contain heavy spoilers for the series, so if you haven't watched the anime or read the manga, I really recommend no, checking it's fine, the series it's fine. out because it's really good. And as now, we've been, we've been pretty good with dodging the spoilers in his previous videos too. Now, we'll be good, right? We'll be good, right? I'm sure it'll be fine. And I'm sure you guys in the chat will let me know in advance if I'm about to get spoiled, right? Please. Usual, if you enjoyed the video and want more breakdowns for the eminence in Shadow, don't forget to like the video and maybe like, consider subscribing subscribe. to the channel. It really helps. I'll link this video later. Yes. Absolutely. <laughs> yes. <laughs> that scene will so never be boring. So before I talk about the organization of Shadow Garden itself, let's quickly go over the founder and leader of the group, Sid Kagano, and his inspiration for its creation. Well, before he was bring kind The sub here says Sid Kagano. Now, I know it's supposed to be Sid Kagano, but isn't Hage basically Japanese for like bald? So this is like baldy? This is basically saying Sid baldy right here? Nated ...in another world as Sid. He was originally from Japan and his name was Kagano Minoru. And ever since he was young, he was inspired. And in the manga, in Japan, he's super jacked, right? Like extreme, like bodybuilder jacked. By TV shows, video games, and other stories to become an eminence in the shadow, a person that manipulates events from behind the scenes. And with this passion, he would spend the rest of his life studying. And right here, right here. This is actually him, no joke, in the manga, straight up. This is not a joke panel. This is just how Sid is in Japan, episode one. That's fucking crazy. Goals, while maintaining a facade of mediocrity in public to hide his true potential. But eventually, he started to realize the limitations of his physical ability. <laughs> look, look how jacked he is here, dude. <laughs> yes, if a nuke is dropped, no amount of bodybuilding is gonna help. With his knowledge and skills, which caused him to seek out more occult solutions. Sadly, this would ultimately be the cause of his death, but he was blessed with a second chance in life when- This is like the fifth time we've seen this, and I'm gonna mention every time. Baldi right here is- Fucking sticking out his gat like crazy. If you could just see this, you know, this panel zoomed out a little bit more. Got his ass stuck out, bro. This fucking stance is super sus, but we need more of Sid's mom, man. We need more of Sid's mom. When he was reincarnated in another world with all his memories intact, now going by the name of Sid Kagano, he even discovered that magic existed in this world and pad. What is the likelihood of him being named Sid again in the new world? Because it's Sid Minoru. Now it's Sid Kagano. It's not that deep. It really isn't. But I'm like, what the fuck? How do you get named Sid again? Unless, you know, this is like an Anno situation. It's like, oh, what should we name her baby? And Anno's is like, Anno's Voldy Goat. That's my name. And that with the knowledge of his previous life, he continued with his mission to become a shadow. 
He secretly trained his magic, swordsmanship, and martial arts all while. Oh, was it Kage no Minoru? Oh, was it Kage? Oh, never mind. Sid Kage no. Kage no Minoru. Sid. Wait. Kage. But his. Kage no got. Then. Sid Kage no got. Okay, okay. First name didn't get carried over, but doesn't the last name get carried over then? Sorry, I. The, the first thing got. You know what I'm saying? The Kageno. He kept the Kageno part. That's what I'm trying to say. Yeah. Kageno. Kageno. While maintaining the image of a generic noble son and a failure compared to his elder sister, Claire Kageno. And as part of his training routine, he would always sneak out at night to hunt down. Woo! Fucking woo! Evening, bitches! If you wanna live, show me your valuables! Protagonist. Parentheses. What the fuck is this midget? This is like after Stylish Band the Slayer style, but he just straight up says this shit in the manga, bro. Why is this such a meme? Holy shit. No bandits, and it was during one of these hunts that he discovered a rotting individual suffering from demon possession. Out of now, because he sensed a large amount of magical energy from the individual, he decided to conduct research on it, and after many experiments, he somehow healed the individual, revealing it to be a young female elf. Thinking that the elf girl might be useful, Sid recruited her to join his mission so he created a narrative about a girl being a descendant from one of the three heroes that defeated the demon Diablo. Someone mentioned the three heroes again. I was only aware of the hero Olivier, but there's like a human, there's like a human hero. There was like a beast man hero. And I think someone said there might be an elf hero too. I'm not really sure. But I think those are the three heroes that was mentioned. So I was like, wait, does not imply like these heroes could come into the story at any time? Because technically Olivier is the elf hero? it's alpha descendant kind of thing right so can we have can the other heroes actually play a story like can they actually show up in the future we'll, we'll, we'll like i don't know yeah this this could be future content yeah oh shit okay i mean this plays into the cult of diablos right i'm sure it's got to be important right if you want more eminence and shadow content i'm sure they could go that path too okay okay and how a bloodline was cursed with demon possession he also fabricated the story that the Cult of Diablos, a secret cult that desires to revive the demon, was responsible for manipulating history, hiding the truth about demon possession, and the once kidnapping descendants of the three heroes. However, Sid's fabrication was somehow revealed to be true to every detail unbeknownst to him. But in any case, he named the Elf Girl Alpha, and this was basically how it led to the formal creation of the secret organization Shadow Guy. Wagana was shadow. We lurk in the shadows. To hunt the shadow. <laughs> He says this every time. Garden. So with Sid as the leader, he decided to take the name of Shadow as his new moniker. He would then spend the next couple of years training Alpha and they eventually recruited six additional members who also suffered from demon possession, which I'll talk more about in a bit. Having said that, I wanted to talk about some of the notable events that Shadow Garden was involved with, like the first time they were deployed when Sid's sister Claire was kidnapped by the cult. They deployed their forces to search for her, but eventually it was thanks to Sid's sheer luck that they were able to find her. Again, he just throws shit, it's in the map. Oh, how did you find it? I don't fucking know, don't worry about it, it's not that deep. They attacked the enemy hideout and Oba, the person responsible for the kidnapping, was disposed of by Shadow. Yo, this Oba guy was kind of, well... You remember when we ended him? Like Sid, I think right now he's holding like a pendant. Like when we ended him, he had like a pendant and the pendant had like um his little sister, I think. His little sister was the one that Alpha slayed in episode five. Remember the one that was being experimented on? I thought it was gonna be kind of important for a second, but I was like, I, do wait, did Sid even take this? It was his daughter? Okay, but did Sid, what did he do with this pendant? Cause I think I memed on this episode saying like knowing this character Sid of how much of a meme he is, like, instead of this, like, this trope of, like, looking independent and being apologetic, he'd be like, who the fuck is this? And just, like, drop it. Or just, like, oh, expensive watch. I might sell it. Something like that. By Shadow. With Claire rescued, Alpha and the She's important still? Fuck you mean she's important still? Don't spoil it! No, 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 don't spoil. Careful, careful. But you were implying that when Alpha used her little eye atomic on her daughter, I thought that was over. I thought that she, that daughter was like cleansed and she can rest in peace now. You're telling me she was important. Okay, okay, don't spoil. Hey, careful. And, and remember, another spoiler kind of territory is the girl in the beginning of episode one, right? I forgot her name. I think it's like Nishina or something. Apparently. Somehow, she could be important in the future. I don't know. Other members decided to leave Sid for the time being in order to expand the influence of their organization. So they left him for a few years, but they will be reunited with him again when he became a student at the Midgar Royal Spellsort Academy. 
emphasis on mid. Thank you, Alpha, for sticking that gear out. I swear to God, the author loves burgers, man. And when Sid was framed for the kidnapping of Princess Alexia Midgard, Shadow Garden became involved in the mission to search for her to clear the name of their master. They eventually discovered the cult was behind the kidnapping, so Shadow Garden deployed their forces to eliminate all the cult's hideouts within the- Wait, 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 wait. I have a feeling... I ha okay, okay, he's get he gets into the members, because I'm like, so far, you're just summarizing the episodes again from the anime room plan. Am I getting baited yet again? No, 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 no. He actually goes into, like, the members here in, in more depth, okay. The kingdom was Sid rescued Alexia and stopped Xenon Griffey, the person behind it. Also, it was after this event that the existence of Shadow Garden and the cult became known to the public, and the cult would start posing as members of Shadow Garden to ruin their reputation, but they were- Yeah, and, like, for the entire episode, these dudes would only say, we are Shadow Garden. Like, you know how Sid says their moon is red? This entire episode, I swear to God, these dudes that was controlled by, I think, Sherry Barnett's uh, adoptive father, they would only straight up say, we are Shadow Garden. Now, 5.30 to 7.32, you're telling me there's a spoiler. Non-anime. Now, are these spoilers... Like, okay, I see a little bit of John Smith. I see a little bit of John Smith. Maybe we should skip this shit, huh? Maybe we should skip this shit, Yeah. Is there a lot of John Smith content here? We'll play just a bit just to kind of feel it out. But the moment he starts talking about John Smith, we are out! We're soon dealt with by Sid and New, a new member that is part of the numbers. But not long after, another notable event Shadow Garden participated in was when the cult had attacked and captured the Midgard Academy. Gamma Mid and several members were deployed to assist Shadow and they managed to eliminate the cult's forces and rescue all the students. Now, before I continue on, as of making this video, the anime okay. only just finished the Midgard Academy attack, so the topics I'll be talking about afterwards will contain spoilers. Here we go! Here we, here we go! So click on the timestamp to skip this portion. Oh, okay, okay wait. Okay, with that out of the way, let wait. us continue. I want to play a little bit dangerous, right? I, I want to be a little bit risky, you know? Thank you, NX, for checking the, ch the video out to let me know when the spoilers are. But I want to play just a bit until it gets to the spoilers, you know? I want to play with fire a little bit. So the next notable event that involved Shadow Garden was when Alpha and her team had infiltrated the Holy Sanctuary. <laughs> No, 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 this is fine, this is fine, no, this is the Nelson one, this is the Nelson one, this is fine, this is fine, we're, we're going to the Baldi land, the holy sanctuary of the Baldi, this is where we summon Aurora and stuff, right? Located in the holy land of Limworm, where they will learn the truth about the three heroes, Diablo. Yeah, the three heroes again, right? Because like, uh, Alpha is a descendant, right, of the Olivier. And the cult itself. And after this event, Princess Rosarana had become a fugitive when she murdered her father at the God of War festival and she Damn, this is how they... In the anime, she straight up just fucking stabbed my father, right? <laughs> like, wait, was the stab, now that I think about it, wasn't the stab basically to, like, free her father, but also try to kill Lord Perv Asad at the same time? It never reached him, right? It didn't, right? And she was later recruited by Alpha. Will you fight alone, or will you fight with us? As a member of Shadow Garden, oh, dude, this is like the this is like the the well, what's maybe the manga had like additional scenes because like I don't remember Alpha being part of the episode where Shadow cures Orion and gives him gives her powers like that. Maybe this is a different scene. Far to join Shadow Garden, going by the new alias of Numbers. She had no plans to kill Lord per Pervasa. Really? I thought the whole point was to get revenge and try to kill him on the spot, like an assassination. 666. But besides that, Shadow Garden will become involved with the Oriana Kingdom afterwards when they discovered the presence of the cult there and Absalon was- I think this part is now spoiler territory. Because now we're about to learn about stuff like Absalon's about to do some espionage stuff, right? Okay. Well, I think it's pretty much implied, like, it's straight up implied that, like, Cult of Diablos has their influences on, you know, or Rose Kingdom. And this is going to be a future arc, right? So now, all right, we skip, we skip, we skip. We'll do a little bit of this, a little bit of that, we'll do a little bit of this. Little... Okay, we're, we're just going to skip. All right. Now, for the main content, the members of Shadow Garden. Again, this is called, what is Shadow Garden and who are the members? So far, it's been like a story summary, but now let's learn about each individual member. Tell me, Anime Roompai. That was all the notable events involving Shadow Garden that I have read about so far, and now for their members. Initially, what the, the fuck organization are they? What, was. What, 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 are they, what are they spoiling at 820? What, 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 what the fuck? What, is this John Smith shit? Maybe it's with Alpha and John Smith stuff, maybe. Established with Sid as the lead. Major spoilers? Jesus! All right, I'll be careful there. And Alpha is the second in command, but later they recruited six more members who- Alpha, Beta, Gamma, Gunma, Gunma, Gamma. Where's for Delta, Epsilon, 
Ada, Zeta. I have a hard time remembering Zeta. To the point where I keep thinking Zeta is the drill sergeant for some reason. I don't know why. Is it just because the same hair, hair, haircut? Like hairstyle? I, I, I don't really know. Who became the original call members. They were Beta, Gamma, Delta, Epsilon, Zeta. Spoil. Typo. Typo. Ganma? Who the fuck is Ganma, huh? I don't remember a Ganma. And Eta. They were all personally trained by Sid himself, even receiving the blessings yeah. and all. The ones who have received their powers directly from Lord Shadow are the first seven members. But, again, these seven girls straight up cured, right? Mana Overlord, the possession, Shadow cures them. And doing so, they actually receive his powers too, right? The seven shadows. And as we're all aware, their strength is on a completely different level from the rest of Shadow Garden. No one else in Shadow Garden has their powers directly given to them by curing the possession like this, right? Except Oriana, right? Right? Because Oriana also was cured. There's two more. It's not just Roku Roku Roku. Don't spoil me, but I keep hearing... Oriana is very different. Even though she's an unnamed sh member, right, of Shadow Garden, she did get her Mana Overlord cured directly from Shadow and was given power. Isn't that the same thing as the original Shades? Is don't, I, no, I, I, okay, don't spoil me by telling me there's another one. That's really high. I'm excited that there's another one, right? But we're talking about Oriana specifically. This is true, right? Oriana did get that power. So she should be like on this tier of strength, potentially. Something like that? Maybe in the future? Because like the only way uh, an unnamed member, an unnamed member is basically rank 26 to Roku Roku Roku, 666, right? These are just like frow fodder, cannon fodder. If these members wants to rank up to the name members, they have to either do a duel against a two-digit member or they have to be acknowledged by, I believe, one of the shades. Who would recognize Oriana? She kind of operates under beta? recently i wonder how she's gonna get that you know that rec that recognition it would be cool if she got recognized immediately by you know shadow that would be the greatest honor right just shadow straight up just like recognizing oriana knowledge imagine shadow gives oriana a burger wrapper bro if they ever do that oh, i'm gonna fucking lose it and then oriana's like for a second wait what burger wrapper you Nah, they probably wouldn't do that right. They wouldn't do that right. His past life, so they were all masters in specific fields like combat, infiltration, science, or economics. But aside from that, the organization mm -hmm. has also grown Jeff over 600 members. Mitsugoshi? The numbers, and they were yeah, that's right. The numbers with the name numbers, but you have the unknown numbers too. Mostly recruited by the Seven Shades. So starting with Alpha, she was the first member of the Seven Shades. We're getting closer to the spoilers, right? I believe you said 820, right? You said 820 to 823. There's a major spoiler. We're getting close. And the second in command of Shadow Garden. She's you did not just say you want Sid's mana inside you. Y'all, you're all wild now. Just because you're on stream now, y'all think some wild shit. Very skilled at infiltration and stealth, but she's also a strong fighter, considered to be the second strongest within the organization. Delta is the strongest. If we're talking about straight up brute force, then Delta number one. Organization after a master. She has skilled enough to tame even. <laughs> Typically, the real leader of okay, okay, we, okay. We, I think we skipped the spoilers there. I think we skipped the spoilers there. We saw a little bit of John Smith in the panel, but no, didn't hear anything. Good. Again, Alpha's second strongest, but is mainly leadership focused. Since Sid often has no idea what is going on. Next is Beta, the second member of the Seventh Shade. She's like the all rounder, right? She doesn't really excel at everything, but she can do everything. And she. And if there was ever to be an absence of Alpha, Beta would be next in command. And then after that would be like Gamma, just because she's also good at like managing and planning stuff. She's the intelligence officer of Shadow Garden, providing information that she acquired through her connections and missions. She's also a jack of all trades and master of none mm. because despite being highly skilled in many areas of how did I know this? Because I watched an Anyus video about the Shadow Garden members. ...of expertise, she isn't as capable when compared to true specialists. I'll say well, this is one of the first moments, right? Beta and Epsilon kind of has a... I don't know, they had a rivalry in this episode. This is the first episode where Epsilon was introduced, remember? The slime suit? Holy shit. Yo, that shit got me like more than a million views on TikTok, bro. But I had to delete it because it could have gotten me a community violation. <laughs> When compared to true specialists, outside of Shadow Garden, she goes by the alias of Miss Natsume, a famous author, and her stories were all based on ones that she learned from mm. Sid. Also, during her free time, she is secretly writing a book recording all the chronicles of her master. Moving on, where Gamma, the third of the seven shades, she Gamma, no, this is Ganma. What are you talking about? Handles most of the administrative and finance work of Shadow Garden. 
She's also the creator and director of the Michigan. And we brought lingerie into this world. And business, actually a big point of the last episode that's kind of glossed over is like, this world has like business casual outfits now. People are just like wearing suits and shit, like the modern world, which is, I guess, kind of cool. Mitsugo, she's really just like out here revamping the style. But Mitsugo, she's gonna go to shit pretty soon, right? Mitsugoshi and the main uh, MOC or some shit, that, uh, whatever the, the opponents are, like, the whole point of this current, you know, thing is to break them both down and just, like, make a new company. Mitsugoshi company. Her strongest trait is by far her intelligence and is skilled in various subjects like economics, engineering, business, and so much more. Zero hand-eye coordination, but very smart, very knowledgeable. Economy, finance, and Sid did teach Gamma all that stuff, right? We saw last episode. Of him like just bullshitting about you know maple story stonks of like buy high sell low that's right you heard me right buy high sell low right mca is my bad okay that's the other company but she, they all look they took that lesson they're just like running they're just running a fucking monopoly in this place another spoiler at 10 16 okay manga pan a spoiler he doesn't say anything but the manga pan okay maybe we'll skip that a little bit too she also possesses tremendous speed and magical power but she's un does she possess tremendous speed Oh, this is the shi 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 episode, right? I, I don't know. Is this versus the Yotsuba? I think this might be a different panel. But right now, she has six arms like the fucking Buddha, bro. <laughs> what, what is this? This is supposed to be some kind of like a reference to some kind of like god deity, right? With multiple arms. Isn't this literally what Onisama, Tatsuya Shiba is like referred to in Mahoka? Straight up, isn't this what it is? I don't know, but this is shi 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 no, this is versus the Clovers, the Yotsuba. They really hyped up the Yotsuba. They hyped him up so fucking much, right? And this guy, okay? This dude, one of the Yotsuba members that was fighting Gamma, okay? He was like, I am the first leaf of the Yotsuba. One in like a thousand years generations worth of talent. The strongest. Take my killing strike. And Gamma just takes a bunk. She's like, ow. <laughs> what the fuck? She does have incredible base stats, bro. I didn't know that she had tremendous speed, but I guess if you say base stats, then it can be assumed that she can be also very fast, super durable, super strong. And she just goes, shh, 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 shh. and her strongest, I, I think that her strongest um, skill set, right? It's not about her base stats. It's about her unpredictiveness. In fighting games or in fighting in general, you have to read the opponent's mind. You have to be aware of what they could do to counter it, right? The better you can read your opponent, the better you'll be able to win. But how can you read someone that doesn't even know what they're doing? And that is the beauty of Gamma Style, which is also explained in the mobile game and shown in the anime last episode, where she basically strips. She doesn't know what the fuck she's doing. She just fucking throws a sword and just kills them. I don't know. It just works. That was a great scene, though. I, the Gamma fight was actually very fun. Unable to fully utilize them because of her clumsiness and lack of coordination. She often trips on absolutely nothing, but it does make her unpredictable. And it's just unpredictable and it's for fan service. Her ass is always shown after she trips. Like, without a doubt, every fucking time she trips, her ass is just sticking up every fucking times. time. I guess that's why Nu is her assistant and personal bodyguard. Then we have Delta. She's the f Delta does not wipe her ass. Delta is a beast girl. She sleeps outside. She doesn't take a shower. She's stinky. This girl does not wipe her ass. You know who else doesn't wipe her ass well? Yukime. Bitch has nine fucking furry foxtails, bro. How the fuck is she gonna get around there to wipe? You know that tail has fucking shit stains. So next time you guys start fetishizing these beast girls like Delta, Yukime, just, just be aware. They probably don't wipe their ass, bro. The fourth member of the Seven Shades and the powerhouse of Shadow Garden. Because she is a beast king, she possesses what the superior strength. What the fuck is this? Oh, it's Nelson. Oh, it's the Nelson one. Oh, okay, I, 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 this never happened in the anime. <laughs> Delta never, like, carried Nelson's head in the anime, right? She just went Bankai afterwards, but holy shit, she did this? Strength and speed, as well as amazing cracking capabilities that impress- This is the first time they met, maybe? Finding enemies is super easy with Delta around. Beast skin has erased the valley strength more than anything. When it comes to hearing and smell, not even I can compare. And that's right. Strength is everything. To the point she would kill her older brother. Doesn't matter. Because he's weak. And if he's too weak, we can just make more babies. And just replace them. That's, that's, that's the whole point. She was also possessed. Her skills as a hunter were unmatched, even within her specialties. But as soon as she showed a sign of possession, she was cast out of her pack. <gasps> no! That's what happened. Well, I mean, it's to be 
pretty much assume like they got possessed and but their pack fucking they just kicked her out that's so mean press even sid himself also thanks to the training she received from sid and equipment from shadow garden <laughs> Cassie just takes the arm off with a smile. The fighting capabilities were greatly boosted, and in terms of raw disruptive power, yeah, Delta and she's number one. Only to Sid, but aside from a master, she has yeah. only been defeated Rank by one. Alpha. That's why she only listens to the commands of Sid and Alpha. In any case, once she has defeated by Alpha, that that's why she. Alpha's look here is very scary. Bad dog, bad dog. And she actually got on her stomach like this. Have we seen a moment like this in the anime? If we get this, this is gonna be so cute. She only listens to the commands of Sid and Alpha. In any case, what she has in physical capabilities, she lacks in the intelligence department, making her quite bloodthirsty and brutal without any- And like, uh, Shadow also mentioned like, you know, beast people, there's some intelligent ones and there's also stupid ones. And it just goes to Yukime and then Delta, which is kind of mean. ...sense of self-control, but she is still the best doggo. Now then, the fifth member of the Shades is- My favorite. Epsilon is my favorite shade. Why? I don't know, I think it's endearing that she's trying to overcome. It's, it's, it's not the fact that she stacks her titties and ass, okay? It's not about that, guys. No, it's definitely not the fact that the first time we saw her, she was naked, and then she became super stacked with the slime magic. It's nothing about that, okay? No, I'm beyond that, okay? I'm a very mature person. What I like about Epsilon is the fact that she is trying to overcome her genetics. She's trying to overcome, surpass the limitations, the cards that she was dealt. Overcome this with the powers of the slime. And this is the pack she made with Shadow, right? It's a very inspiring story. The recoil is insane. You're right. Now, don't tell me Epsilon is the closest to Lolly. No, she's not. No, no, she's not. No. But spoiler is coming up soon, right? I think it's like 1020, I think. It's Epsilon and she handles infiltration for Shadow Guy. Cause she just looks so flat here, oh my god. But she does like main espionage, right? If you watch One Piece, this is basically Mr. Prince, Sanji. She just goes behind the scenes, does all the spying work, the espionage, stuff Garden. like that. She's also known as Deadeye because she has the greatest- Deadeye? What? I didn't know this. 1016? 1016? Okay. Thanks for the spoiler checks, guys. Just control over magic than all the other members. But funny thing is, she only- Dead eye because she has the greatest control over magic. I thought it was dead eye because she starts sniping or some shit. She became so good at controlling magic. Not a single day has passed without creating a slime body. Is it shapeful and beautiful? Is it firm yet soft to the touch? And most importantly, does it look natural? Yes. Because she was self-conscious of her body and she thought it wasn't sufficient to seduce a master. I feared that my lord would grow tired of me. I didn't want to go back to that miserable life. What was her past? What happened? If I could at least excel in beauty, damn, she was, a, she was getting scared of being abandoned, but I think this is a little bit of Delta spoilers, right? We're going to skip over that. Some sad, you know, sorry, some sad uh, Epsilon spoilers. I'm not seeing anything. I didn't see anything there. I didn't see anything. I was looking at Chan. For appearance while also giving her more defense and protection. But aside from combat, Epsilon also has skills in playing the piano. Did she just mention? Did he just mention that the slime suit actually, it's not just like the breast padding. It actually gives him like protection. That's insane. It's thanks to the music she learned from Sid. That said, Zeta is the sixth member of the Shades. She's also an intelligence officer like Beta, but she handles more on the exploration and reconnaissance. She's never shown that much, never gets lines. It's very hard to remember who she is. ...inside of things, so she's skilled at things like tracking, recon, and stealth. She's also a beast king like Delta, but it seems like she's more intelligent and has more self-control compared to her counterpart. Not much is known about her as she has not been properly introduced. This scene was in the finale. This is very cute. Out of nowhere. It's just this girl came out of nowhere. It's like another fucking dog girl, cat girl. What the fuck? And it's like what the bunch of penguins. It's like very cute. In the light novel. And we only seen her briefly in the anime as well. Although in the spin-off chibi anime, she does have her voice role. As for the final member of the Shades, we Ada. Have and she's quite scientist. the smartest member of Shadow Garden. She's the organization's head scientist responsible for research and development. We haven't really seen her do anything yet though, huh? She like sleepwalked once. Even helping to research and improve the slime bodysuit used by the organization. And? She's oh, she's the one that kind of came up with the slime bodysuit too. Okay, so that goes full circle. I'm like, okay, I know how the slimes are working because Shadow, you know, like took a bunch of slime cores, took a bunch of Remus descendants and like experimented. But I think we're about to get another spoiler. Three. Seems to be quite good with language and translation. As and these are spoilers. We skip here. And Kagejitsu time. Similar to Zeta. Not much is known about her, but she has appeared with a voice role in a spin-off chibi anime as well. Now moving on to some of the notable numbers that we know of. Nu is the earliest known numbers. Nui. Being the 13th person that was recruited. She is currently working as an employee of the Mishugoshi company and personal bodyguard of Gamma. Then with Victoria, also known as okay. 559.
This is 559. Uh, wait, wait. Wait, which... Wh this is 559 over here? And she used to be known as... Because I, I know this one that's always eating. And then this, this girl right here is the one that's always, like, just, like, angry. A spoiler. Ah, it's not... I mean, new Shadow Garden girl kind of is spoiler, I, I guess. Right? But, like... To get to know them, I guess it is kind of spoiler. Yeah, maybe we'll skip this part. Hard spoiling? All right. Then, okay, all right, I'll skip it. I'll save it for the future, but there's more girls to expect. Okay, okay, I'll skip it. I'll, thanks for looking out for me, guys. All right, now to Rose. Let's go. This is crazy, because this is the most replayed section. This is the most replayed. Wait, 559, yeah, 559, that face, actually. That's from the trailer. That's from the trailer. She's going to be super... Oh. Oh, okay, big spoilers then. We have Rose Oriana on number 666, and she joined Shadow Garden after she became a fugitive for killing her father. She also received powers personally from Shadow, but he has yes. no idea she is part of Shadow Garden. Do you desire power? Straight up cured. Straight up cured gave power. Garden. And I think she deserves... By the way, is that arc going to be stronger? Is that arc going to be better than um, John Smith arc? It's her own video, so I'll just leave her story at here for now. No! I want Oriana more! <laughs> that was right, one of the coolest yeah. scenes, right? That's when we're like, this is the Sherry Barnett arc one more time. Who are we? Someone say it one more time. Want to end it? Keep a story at here for now. You were a Yeah, we are. We lurk in the shadows to hunt the shadows. Another great video by Anime Room Pie. Please go sub to his channel if you liked the video. Like this video as well. It's always nice to get more people with actual eminence and shadow knowledge to actually get to know more content. But the spoilers are a little bit annoying, but it's not, you know, it's like we can't really do much about that. Thanks for looking out for me, guys, to, you know, tell me when the spoilers are. And by the way, we do these reactions live on stream 7 a.m. PST on YouTube. So hope to see you there.